taking note of. You know, just, just looking back at life. The valley allows you to pause and just hear the right voice, the divine voice and the direction that you may have missed. So, appreciate the time in the valley and make use of the stillness, the calm, the quiet and the slower pace. Because life just give you a cree. Life just give you a cree. And you can be so frustrated with yourself that you don't realize say, it's a pause that is meant to serve you. So you start get frustrated and frantic and antsy and I do everything to try and move fast, fast, fast. Mm -mm. Sometimes the valley is the cree, is the pause. You're supposed to stop and listen. Sorry, there's another person here who um is allowing me to emotionally abuse them. And I don't like that. I don't like to abuse people. So, take the creed. Just be still. No rush it. Be patient. And give yourself the time. Accepting, of course, that you're not in the valley to stay. So, you, you know, you're not going to and a rush for splurt. Because you know, so you're not going to stay. You're not going to stay. So, you're not going to feel bad forever. You're not going to sad forever. You're not going to have pain forever. You're going you're gonna to move past it. You know? But what do you do in that dip? What are you doing at the valley? Vex with yourself till you come out or be still and hear. Be still and hear what is being said. What is here for me? What do I need to learn? Just be patient and compassionate with yourself. Be still. I've had to do that a lot in my life because there are a lot of things that, I mean, I work on on a day-to-day -day basis and Sometimes it can feel like you're alone. Nobody understands it. You're not you're not seeing the, the payoff, you know. If you own a business, you know what I mean. Um, it can be discouraging. Not everything in life and every moment in life is a point of encouragement. And you don't have to be really my, one of my friends would call it rose-colored glasses. You have, you have, like your rose-colored glasses tint of a strong. For you, just see rose every single day in your life. Just all you see are good things. Sometimes some bad things that there. And you have to accept it. No, man, that one is bad. That's your valley. And since it's bad, I'm going to be still and ask, what lesson should I learn now? What is being taught to me about myself? How will I come out of this valley stronger, fitter, better, braver? Ho, 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 ho. And sit down and figure it out. So that's the first thing. Just being open enough, patient enough to be still when you get the cree. Just be still and, and listen to what's going on. Listen to what the people around you are saying, how they are interpreting you being in your valley. You know, who is rejoicing and who is celebrating and who is glad. Who is concerned, who is loving, who is supportive, who is compassionate. Yeah? Learn inside how you feel about yourself. What are the things you're saying to yourself? What were the things you said to yourself that made yourself feel this way and lead you here? So just listen to your life. Listen to, the, to, to your life in the valley. The other thing I find to be very useful is a powerful definition of self. And this is where the people who are on now I really hope you guys screenshot this part of it, right? The mischief makers who are on the live. <laughs> oh, remember, for those who are just coming on, there's a rule here. If you have something negative to say, if you're not a lover of crystal, like you don't, you don't pre-map my energy and my vibe with love, I'm not saying you, don't have, you shouldn't watch this live. You know? I'm saying you have to be emotionally responsible. Because if you hate me like Pison, you can't be here looking in my face, listening to my voice and allowing it to touch the deepest parts of your soul. Because you're probably going to have a nightmare tonight. What kind of like me? And you're just there here and listen to my voice and looking at my face. So be careful how you watch this life. Because you're either going to give yourself a nightmare or you're going to leave with a changed mind about me. However, 
if you comment anything that is disrespectful on my page and my live, I'm going to block you. All right? So if you, if you realize that, you know, you get bumped off the line and you can't find it, find it back, it's because I block you. All right? Now, but I refresh Instagram too much. Just know what happened. And this is me looking out for your emotional health and well-being. Because I'm, I'm a nice person. Would you, you never understand why you wouldn't like me. You say, may I look out for you? And you don't even like me. But that's what I'm going to do for you. Okay? Um, so, yeah. Self-definition, I find, is a powerful tool in the valley. The silence and the stillness that come from getting a cree and a pause. But self-definition, I find, to be a very powerful tool. And I'll tell you what. You have to know yourself in the valley. Because when you get in the valley, a couple of things are going to happen. I mentioned one of them earlier. You start questioning yourself, like, why me? Why me? Why does this have to happen to me? And that's the song I played earlier by Kevin Downswell um, and Ryan Mark. I often ask, why me? And when we're in the valley, that's what we're going to ask. Why me? Why, why things can't go better? Why things always are bad for me? You know, why me? It just seems like there's a never-ending weight on my shoulders. I can't catch a break. Why me? And then you start calling yourself all kind of names. You know, I become a, I insert a negative self-talk. You know, you start blaming yourself and beat up yourself for being in the valley. Remember, we have accepts that the valley is a part of the journey. And there must be something where you don't learn it that you have to learn in order to come out of that valley stronger. So, yeah, though I walk through it, I'm going to learn I'm supposed to learn because I'm going through it. But you have to know yourself because when you're in the valley now, all kind of voices are going to start come tell you who you be. Either you start calling yourself names that are not divine. Names that are not of your creator. Names that are not of God. You start attach some label to yourself where they aren't true. That's not who you are. But you see, because you never define yourself and you're not clear on who you are and who send you come. And who for energy and spirit and affirmation and permission you walk with upon this earth. When you're reaching at the valley now, you start wonder if a cross is a follow you. You start wonder if something wrong with you while you are in the valley. Nothing wrong with you. And you have to define yourself better than that. So when bad things happen, you remember who you be. Because a lot of us forget who we are when things get rough. And another way to look at it is your true definition of yourself, what you really think about yourself, is what you're going to put on display when you're going through the valley. Because that is who you think you are. That is who you think you are. So if you go through the valley now, you get vicious and bitter and war. I just be a war and cuss and you have to draw down everybody because if you don't, everybody have to down. That is who you are. You define yourself to be a contentious person. So you choose this harmony instead of harmony. That is who you've chosen to be. Choose better. Define better. Define yourself better than that. So that when you're in the valley, you don't put on clothes when I fit you. You look for your clothes. My clothes is peace. So a peace me I put on right now in the valley. I'm not going to pick no fight and a war with nobody. My clothes is love. So I'm not going to show no hatred. I'm not going to show no disrespect. Because my clothes are what? Love. That disrespect shirt, they not fit me. That not fit me. And that me wear. But you have to know yourself first. Because if you don't know yourself, you will put on anything. And sometimes the easiest thing for grabbing at the valley is some dirty clothes. A valley in you know? A valley in you know? some people pass through the valley and left some dirty clothes down there. And you reach the valley now and you want to reach and pick up the dirty clothes and wear. And are you that? That and your shirt and your pants and your shoes and your socks and your gloves and your hat and your glasses. That you, It can't fit you. It can't fit you. So when I am in my valley, there is not going to be any spirit of war and strife. Because that's not who I am. That's not who I am. The clothes don't fit me. I'm not because I got through something difficult. I got squeeze up myself and I didn't close No, it doesn't smell good. And I might close that. Then, then me could I really put on that shirt. Then no, no. And I don't mind that. Somebody leave it in there for me. Somebody want to put it on. But I don't mind. I know myself. I know who I am. So I see the, I see the comments, you know, sometimes and asking, yo, oh, you're not answering them because I me, I stretch them out and bend them up and done them long time. I don't mean that. The clothes don't fit me. Close enough for me and I mean that. And that is why. That is why I know who I am. And there's nothing about the words that people have to say that is enough to change me and turn me into who I am not. It never happened. 
So one of my biggest tools in any valley where me I go through is to remember who I be. I'm a child of God. I'm created by the most high. Me I walk around with a divine God essence. A God make me. And a play don't make me. You understand? And I walk, somebody walk in a mud and one print left back and then them say, oh, that name she? Mm -mm. A God make me. And if I'm a child of God, I saw me I go walk around like a child of God. So even when I'm in the valley, I forget who I am. I'm going to forget my principles. I'm going to forget my values. Not because things get rough. Not because things get difficult. So know who you are. And the other reason why you have to be clear on who you are in the valley. Fam, the valley have some vermin. The valley has some vermin. Like people who live and thrive in the valley. See the, the, the dark, moldy, wet, frowny, rocky, hard place them. There are some people who love to live there. Sometimes you see people make a comment and say, Oh, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I live for this. Some people live for the valley. They love to see you low because they have decided to live in the valley. So them love when them get little company. What? Oh, you say, I drop a drop. Glad to have you down here. Stay down here. Them still like you're not drop yet. Them are reach for bring you down in the valley too because valley them live in her. And I call them the vermin of the valley. You know, you have the shadow of the valley of death. I call it the vermin in the valley. That's where they thrive. They love to have you there. And them are going to give you the clothes to put on where they don't fit you. And if you don't know who you are, you will start to answer to the names that they're calling you. Like one of the things I see now are people telling me who I am. Like them literally making up a story, <laughs> right? Them not satisfied with how things have gone in the last week and they need to make it into something to satisfy them. So they might make up every story and I call every name. And me I talk to. Oh, me must answer you. I don't, I don't know who you're talking about because it's not me. You say you're talking about me, but I know who I am and the person that we are talking about is not me. You just make up somebody so you can cuss and make up somebody so you can vex and make up somebody for your eight. Have fun. Have fun. But Anamia talk to. Anamia talk about. So you think you're talking about me, but you're not talking about me because that's not who I am. So Omi must come join the vermin in the valley and debate with them and quarrel with them and prove to them and show them and open their eyes. That's not their goal. You see them ask a question, they're not asking any question. They're making statements. So what I must do, run down the statement and the fact that they're having them head? No, no, no. If you want me to answer a question, you could ask. I might answer. But if you never ask a question, certainly no say is you're not calling me. If you make up your mind about something and decide that this is true and I saw it go and you know, the person you do this and the person you do that, make up the story. Make up the story. It's not me you're talking to. And that's why I'm not answering you. It's not me you're talking about. You think you're talking about me. But you're not talking about me. And so, I'm not going to answer you. Because I know who I am. And there's nothing you can say in this world to confuse me about who I am. Or to get me to debate with you about who I am. It's not going to happen. So one of the great tools for me in the valley is self-definition because that gives me peace. I don't feel the need to prove anything anywhere. So that's what's been keeping me settled, calm, at peace, and just literally unbothered. Because I know who I am. And to know that is divine direction because not only do I know who I am I know where I'm going cue that gospel so I know where I am going right and the last thing I want to share with you in terms of the third tool to use in the valley it comes from knowing that pain is not permanent and that's where you're gonna be able to use this next tool you have to know that what you're feeling while you're in the valley is not permanent. It's temporary. And some of us give us, hey, Michael, bless up, bless up, bless up. Thank you so much, my friend. Some of us give our pain 
permanence when it's meant to be temporary but we own it and we hug it up and we say boy i just my life this my always i feel aware my always my always my always my always my up my up mm -mm. that's not your always you are blessed you are so fearfully and wonderfully made you are a child of the creator of this world like how much people could have born and are you born how much people did already and you're still here you're awesome and you're amazing what do you mean pain is not your birthright it's purpose and love but you have to accept that first that the pain not permanent no matter how hard it, it feeling and no matter how it at it's not permanent it's not permanent but we make it permanent depending on how we deal with it so you get a cut and instead of treat the cut to heal the cut yeah pick pick it you know it start healing you start pick off the scab you look at it and I dig your finger down in there like a more because you have to see you and you put yourself in a position to feel pain. And I push your finger down in there some more and I show some people and I say, look, they touch it, touch it. And then dig it out some more. Like you have chosen not to heal and to create permanent pain where naturally the course of life will heal you. Time, them say time heal all wounds. But the most important lesson there is with time, you will heal. But you can't just look on the pain and as it start, you pick it off or you, you know, you put yourself in a position so that it get reinfected and all kind of something. Like you're standing in the way of your healing and then telling yourself that all you've ever known is pain. The pain is permanent. The pain isn't permanent. And so here's a tool. Self-compassion. You have to love yourself. You have to love yourself enough to give yourself permission to heal. You have to love yourself enough to give yourself permission and time and the resources and the medication and the bandage and the cotton and the alcohol. Give yourself all that you will need to heal. And not many of us love ourselves enough to treat ourselves well when we're going in the valley. When we're sitting in the valley, we start beat up ourselves. And that makes it so hard to come out. Because we're not show ourselves no love. We're not show ourselves no respect. We're not show ourselves no honor. Because we're in the valley, we become our own vermin in our own ears, a thought down to ourselves. So just to go back over, oh, I just see, I saw you guys asking about a donkey fellow. Yo, I'm going to keep them so busy creating fake pages, but I saw it go. I enjoy it. I saw it. So just to go over quickly. The three tools that I consistently use to go through the valley is my valley toolkit, right? Whenever I see myself going through hardship, disappointment, struggle, stress, whatever it is, first thing I firm in my head is, all right, this is part of life, right? I'm not a victim. I'm just somebody who is living. And once you're alive, this will happen. There's going to be some disappointment. There's going to be some stress. There's going to be some pain. Something, something, something. Something I will come. Oh, wait, I haven't seen. <laughs> Somebody said the block. John Crow. I don't see John Crow. Come, John Crow. Write something, make I see you. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here we No. Wait, what is happening here? All right, let me see. If if I, another negative comment pops up, hopefully I'll see it. <laughs> I can't find it. Um, right. The Valley Toolkit. 
So remember, I come into the valley understanding that this is a familiar place. I'm going to see enough more valley, but I don't belong here. I am a visitor, right? I don't belong here. I am here for a specific reason, and it's to learn something and grow my way out of this valley. Yeah, do I do what? I walk through. <laughs> okay? I walk through. So, I accept that. And then I make use of the Cree, the stillness, the quiet, the silence. What am I supposed to learn here? Oh, somebody asked me to turn off the, um, the comments. Okay, I just did. <laughs> what am I to learn here? What in this valley, in this quiet and in this silence am I supposed to learn? And guys, I'll take questions after. So if you have questions, you can use the question um, feature. And I'll just jump in for, for questions. Maybe like 10 minutes of questions. So, I make use of the creed, the stillness, the pause of the moment right the valley throw me off you know i was on a plateau maybe i was on a peak but the but valley okay is that cree is that time out pause what is my life trying to tell me let me learn let me listen the other tool i use is self-definition i have to know who i am because in the valley you will start to tell yourself things beat yourself up and the vermin in the valley who love to see you there right those are the things that they thrive on they enjoy it it's just a joy for them to see people going through difficult times like them enjoy like it's just like whoa oh my god somebody crash yes show me the blood who dead who i'm broke oh my god see me said i'm not a care again oh praise the lord they're without i love it the valley vermin love to see you there and so you'll find yourself being fed those voices while you're in the valley and you start questioning yourself. So you need to have a strong and powerful definition of who you are. So when you're in the valley and it is difficult, you don't lose sight of who you are. Because you're so much bigger than the circumstance that you're in right now. You're so much bigger than the challenge that you're overcoming right now. You're a big ball of potential. Something I say all the time, you are not your failures. I don't want nobody to define me by my failures. I don't want nobody to define me by my success. I'm not my failures and I'm not my successes. If you think I've done amazing things before, don't define me by that because I'm such a big ball of potential. You don't even see half of what I'm capable of doing yet because that's how I define myself. Not by the success and the failure. Those are things I experience. I define myself by my potential. And as long as I continue to see my potential, the half has not been told. So have a powerful definition of yourself. And exercise compassion, self-compassion, self-love. Take care of yourself. Don't allow yourself to succumb to those negative feelings. Whether it is a negative self-talk, whether it is a disappointment you face, whether it is the actual, the real difficulty of the situation. Because valleys are not just emotional spaces. Sometimes valleys are financially difficult spaces. Valleys are um, spaces that prevent you from completing your degree, from finding a job from keeping a job from putting food on your table a valley is anything anything at all that puts you in a position of great difficulty where slow you up you're supposed to move but you can't move you're in the valley and i say you belong there is nothing growing there there's nothing thriving there but i they say there right now so it can be anything and only you know your situations so when you're in that difficult situation it not help focus yourself because that's not a solution Take care of yourself. Look and see what you need to heal from. Look and see what you need to work on. Look and see what you need to walk through. One of the things I shared on my page was that when you're in the valley, plant. Plant. Invest in something. Invest in yourself. Since you're going to be there, spend some time doing something that will improve you and how you're seeing and enjoying life. So it's part of the healing process. Do you need to start reading different things? Do you need to start going different places so you can meet different people and get different perspectives and understanding? Expand your circle professionally and otherwise. What else could you do right now while you wait on things to turn around, while you wait to develop the strength, while you're working on relearning and healing? What could you do every day that positively invests in your future self? Because remember, you know who you are, you know? So even though you're there, so now, you know, see, you're nasty. So there's somewhere else that you're going, you know, there's a future. So what will you do while you're in the valley to show that you have hope for your future? How will you act like you know that there is hope 
for your future? What will you plant in the valley? You have to plant something. Maybe I can start eating different. Maybe I can start drinking some more water. Maybe I can start work out. Maybe I can start read. Maybe I can start get some more sleep. What are you going to do to treat yourself better? Even while you are healing and growing through. So those are the those are the three things that are in my valley toolkit whenever I'm experiencing difficult oh, difficulty. Whenever I'm experiencing difficulty and disappointment, which is regular. Like Oliver Travel, regular. Very regular, right? <laughs> and when I say regular, I mean if we're gonna go a hundred percent. Let's say maybe 20 to 30% of the time, there's a huge problem to solve that's difficult to solve. Um, there's something that you were set, I was setting myself up to do and but it not happened, fail. But, 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 but. Things that I go left it, I were roadblock, things that were roadblock. About 20 to 30% of the time, I'm making my way through the valleys. So that's the call, regular, right? But I have a toolkit. So if I don't have a toolkit, I'd have spent longer time than necessary in the valleys. But we see, say we're in there. We get we, we ask them together, get our mind in the game. Remember who we are. Remember the purpose for which we are on this earth. I remember setting valley after everybody. If me and the first person in our valley like this. So guess what? Me I'll do something when makes sense in another valley here. Valley can't get the best of me. Oh, or the valley can get the best of me. Mm -hmm. So I have to walk around with that valley toolkit. So when it gets difficult, I go, oh, all right. Remember that this is a part of life. All right, there's a little bit of stillness. Things have slowed down, like yeah, Cree. Take the time and listen. Just go inside and just get centered and settled. All right, remember your definition definition of self. Who are you? Or are you that person only when things are good? No, man, you're that person even when things are not good. So be that person in this valley. And how are you going to take care of yourself and show yourself love as you go through this valley? And then do it. So I did promise to take some questions. Mercy me, I'm seeing enough questions. Oh, okay. Um, I just reshared them, so I hope you got it. Um, so it's really four. Accepting that it's just part of life. Failure is part of life. It's evidence that you're living. When you're not living, or when you have to stop feel. And then accept the moment of stillness, the clarity that comes with things slowing down a little bit. Listen a little deeper to yourself. Listen to your life. Look back at all the cues that you may have missed. Use the pause productively and purposefully. Dig deep into your definition of self because you have to remember who you are when things get difficult. You have to remember who you are. It's easy to be your highest self when a beer nice is in a life. Can you be your highest self when things are not nice? And then finally show yourself some compassion like you have to love your, love yourself through even the hard things love yourself when things are not easy love yourself when things get rough and tough love your, love yourself when you feel when you miscalculate when you make a mistake you have to still love yourself because it's how you treat you in the moments of failure that's going to determine whether or not you come out of the valley how you treat yourself when you fail is going to determine whether or not you come out of the valley so if you treat yourself like a loser or you go in you not give yourself no winner vibe you not give yourself no winner energy. You not give yourself no winner direction. No winner power talk. You give yourself some loser talk. So, oh, you have a winner. Come out. You have to love yourself. Blessings to you. Beat by Nords. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Let me see. Um, Somebody's asking, how do I handle the negative um, due to what's out, and, uh, what's out about my relationship? Um, I had shared it earlier. Most of the things that you are able to see online, I can't see them. I don't see them. I don't follow the pages that share it. Um, and I don't have people in my circle who take pleasure in sharing those things with me. So it really go over my head. Like there are some days when I get up and I get messages, like people are saying, Crystal, are you okay? We're just checking if you're doing well. And I say, oh, what? What do you think happened? Like something happened? And like I have to start asking, like, did, did I miss something? Like what happened? I really just don't know. <laughs> I really just don't know. Um, so I don't see half of it. One and two. Um, and two. I also disassociate myself from whatever negative comments I do see. I know they're not talking about me. 
Because it's just not me. Like the person who they make up and I talk about. And I'm me. Like that's not true. So if you insist that somebody that they will do that. Somebody that they will think that. And them have my name. I must want next one because I'm not me. It's not me you're talking to. And because me accept says, Kia, me 